Hi guys, uh, Gigi here. Um, it was a long time again since I made my last uh, video. Um, today, uh, yeah, first of all, I hope you are healthy and uh, everything is okay in these times. Um, stay safe and uh, let's let's continue with uh, with our video. Uh, today, I'm going to open up and show you. Uh, valve body mechatronic unit from the ZF gearbox 6 HP 26 uh, 6 HP 26 it's uh, used in many uh, cars like uh, BMW Jaguar uh, Audi and so long uh, <coughs> but it it's well known uh, from the BMW world um, the 6 HP 26 it's a 6 the speed automatic gearbox and today we are going to uh, open up a valve body mechatronic unit and see what's inside uh, what components we should uh, check if we are trying to refurbish uh, such a unit um, problems uh, what we have seen with these uh, valve bodies are the solenoids uh, for the oil pressure and um, maybe the oil dampers inside the, the mechatronic unit can uh, can can be a problem, but mostly it's it's the valve body solenoids, and what we have seen inside the gearbox are some burnt clutches or uh, burnt e clutch, uh, the, the final the last one which is the weakest one in in, in in the gearbox. I don't have a gearbox here; I just have the the valve body mechatronic, and we will open it together and we will see what uh, we should uh, uh, check and what we should look after when we uh, we open it um, so we can assemble it again in uh, in, in working condition so uh, this is our unit uh, this is the back side to call it so uh, it will sit in, in the gearbox in in this position this posi this will be upside on the on the gearbox um, and this model it's uh, held on the gearbox with uh, with 13 screws I have one two three here three here and then I have seven here on this on this side um, the ones on the on the gearbox I think they are T30 if I'm not wrong and the other ones from the valve body itself, they are T27. So in order to open this up, we need the T27 torque. Uh, what we should be aware before we start opening it? Note the, the position of each ESD, of each uh, solenoid. Uh, mark it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or whatever you want. Uh, if you want to change it, then uh, yeah, just make a picture and, and, and follow the order. You know, they are co color coded. You will see orange, blue, two yellow, one blue, one yellow. Know the position and if you change it, just uh, remember to put it in the, in the same order. Uh, before we can take this apart, we will have to uh, take up the, the disassemble the electronic part, the, the TCU itself, uh, which if we look here, you can see we have a sensor here. Uh, we have two screws here, one here, one here, uh, one, two here, and two on the other side that uh, we cannot see them. This is the connector that sits actually outside the, the gearbox, or, or yeah, it's pushed inside the gearbox. You can see here the, the locking mechanism. You just push the little tab, pull it out, and then you can take this out. Uh, you can only insert this in one position. I don't know if you can see. Uh, let's see, focus somehow. It has a little tap here in the middle and it cannot be inserted in any other position because you have a tab on the mechatronic unit right here. So you can see you can only put it in this position. It will not turn any anyway. And when you have this out, you will not be able to lock. Why? Because 
we have here some some metal clumps I don't know if you can see it I'm not sure you can see the, the metal clumps here and this will be pushed will be pushed inside when you put the the connector housing so when you put it in you push it and then they will push the little metal uh, tabs and then you can lock it else you will not be able to lock it so that's a sure way to know if this is inserted correctly or not I will change the camera position for a bit and then we will start uh, disassembling so as I said before uh, first we need to take out the, the electronic part the TCU and it's held by these screws in this part I will start opening by here and then turn it around and remove the, the TCU I will just loosen them a little bit first yeah before <clears throat> you start this operation and you are sure you want to open this valve body and split it apart you will need to note a few things all the screws first these ones the last ones I will just let them for now uh, <clears throat> before you do if you want to open it I recommend uh, to change also the uh, separator plate and if you want to change the separator plate just note the number here on this uh, unit here the number ah, don't let it stand it's A063 so if you want to change this the separator plate between the, the valve body uh, you can see it's two uh, parts if you want to change this one it's recommended to change it if you open it uh, you have to note the, the exact model and then order this specific model for your, uh, for your uh, valve body so now we have opened these ones I will get an electric drill an electric screwdriver or whatever you want to call it and I will take these screws out first so carefully don't push it you have a sensor here you don't want to break it if you break this sensor it's done so take your time and just do it easy So this stupid camera made a, a move on me, a joke. Um, it was taking still shots while I was opening the screws. But um, just to get to get an idea, you will have some long uh, screws and some short screws. The short screws are holding the valve body together. The long screws are holding the the TCU, the electronic part, together. So before you you. You take the screws out and now you want to take the, the electronic part, part out you will notice that this can only go here in one way you will have to insert the plastic let's see if i can focus here yeah so this parking solenoid should go only in this position when you put it back now we took all the screws out when we took all the screws out in order to disconnect the electronic part, uh, just use a flat uh, screwdriver and slowly pry it out. Slowly from here, turn it on the other side, pry it from here. You will see here you have some uh, guide pins, so this cannot go in any other way. It's the only way you can put it in. So push it here slowly turn it around yep and it's out now watch out here yeah here is the uh, parking brakes uh, brake valve when you push this out 
don't lose the the valve instead of just having it wiggle around you can just take it out and put it aside so the electronic part is out you can see I have the the connectors for the for the solenoids here and as far as I can see somebody had replaced the solenoids before we put this aside and before I go any further note the position of the of the solenoids take a picture uh, if you are not replacing this put numbers on them because they are uh, calibrated to your uh, to your TCU and when you take them out just put them back in the same position going to loosen up this yeah I will need the extension we we'll loosen this one three four five six seven eight so eight screws they are very short so you cannot swap them around Now we take the holding plate and I put it aside and now you can take your solenoids out. They look like this with a filter and an o-ring to hold pressure. I don't think these are ZF original ones. I think there are some aftermarket solenoids, but and you can see there is a voltage. I don't know if you can see, <clears throat> but it's a voltage on them and the pressure that they hold. So my eyes are not so good. This one it's a 12 volt 4.6 bar. And let's see. I don't know if you can see it, but on each of them they will say the the pressure and voltage and a part number. I'm going to put this all aside. Okay, now that we have them out of the way, we are going to open the valve body. Uh, this valve body, uh, as I said, it's... Uh, it's two parts, uh, the lower and the upper part, and between them there is a separator plate that it's uh, it has some some silicone uh, gasket on it. So if you are not changing this and you don't have another one, do not attempt to clean this one with uh, with anything uh, that can remove the, the silicone gasket the plate itself it's it's a metal so you cannot damage it but you can damage the gasket So before you open this, make sure uh, 
you have the right gasket the separate plate uh, if you are going to change it and now let's try to see where we can pry with with the screwdriver here slowly it came apart on this side hold it together so it doesn't and we have another place here so let's see now when you take it out when you take it out make sure you don't twist this the other way you have a lot of check balls here you have some springs you have some oil dampers you have many things that should stay on place if you lost the position or if you lost them you can say bye bye as I can see this separate plate looks okay um, but looks like I have maybe some place where the oil is going from one side to the other as you can see it's dirty but it looks like the oil just went past the, 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 the gasket we'll try to put this aside and just gently clean this up with some with some paper Yeah, you can clearly see the gasket here, the silicone gasket, it's gone and oil might have flown from one channel to another. So let's see if we can see some leaks here. Yeah, I can clearly see something here. And I can clearly see something here. Well, oil might have passed by or not. This plate doesn't look exactly as I want it to be. So I will uh, change that. Uh, let's check the other side. It came out. On the other side, it looks actually pretty good. So it was not taken apart. Now, this being said, we will put this back on its position and take it aside. Uh, if you want to clean the whole the whole uh, whole thing, you have to know the position of the check balls. One, two. I will show you how they look like. Um, you can see it here in the hole. There is a ball that will uh, move with, with the, when the oil pressure raises or or falls. It will go up or down, and leaving more or less oil to 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 pass. But the purpose of, uh, of this video was, uh, let's see how the filters look. The filters look clean. You have all, also some, uh, some, some filters. Uh, the purpose was to change the oil dampers. The oil dampers, um, in order to take them out without uh, wipe, uh, putting the, the, the valve body on the other side, it's there is a hole underneath them so let's see if I can get it a bit more down so if you have to take this out for example let's say we want to take this oil damper out uh, in order to do this I will have to push from the other side there is a small hole I can check it here 
and I can push it slowly up. I'll put it down so I can grab it from the other side. But you get the idea. And we can check how they look like. Okay, this one, it's almost okay. I will show you how a new one looks like. Uh, but we will change it because we have it. But you can see this is, is like a ball, a uh, rubber ball that comes up and then uh, it will hold the, the oil pressure. So we put this back in and I can see one that's pretty pushed down. And I think this one is not okay anymore. So, we take this out, and yeah, this one, the head, it's pretty flat, so this one has been misused, to say so, pretty well. Uh, so, these are the oil dampers, and I will show you how a new one looks like. So you can see how a new one looks like in comparison with the other one, the head is pretty bold. Okay, um, to reassemble again the whole thing, we just go uh, into the reverse order. After I will change this one, we put the valve body back, uh, put the screws, put the TCM and this should be it. So just check, you know. Don't lose the, the spring, the, the valve springs, I don't know how, how you call it. Uh, don't miss the place, don't lose the check balls. Uh, if you want to clean this, note the position, note everything, and then start taking it apart. So this is how it looks like for the ZF. Uh, we don't do so many ZFs. Uh, we do mostly DSG, but uh, sometimes ZF need a little bit of attention too. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. If you have any questions, let me know.